I want to lay it all out for what's in front of Shad. We don't know the financial aspect of it, except for the fact we could just assume it's one large check he would have to write. Yeah, what did Mike say earlier Meyer? this week that it's he in said the it's not nearly six to it, seven yeah, million, which is yeah. less than I thought it would have right. been. Well, right. this is before folks like Lincoln Riley making eleven, but and <laughs> Brian Kelly making. But I think 10. we all assumed it was in the eight to ten range when it's it really not. Right. right. So at any rate, it's still anybody's guess. But the bottom line, it's still a large check for him yeah. to stroke. But yeah. the money's in the account. I mean, he can do it. The question is, does he want to? make the move after Urban Meyer uh, was the hire he's always apparently wanted to make. And he made that was a coup of a hire for him and certainly for the Jacksonville Jaguars franchise. So, and then you have to consider this too. What if Urban, you know, he did hire Daryl Bevel, uh, Brian Schottenheimer. What if he didn't want to, Right. What if part of this was you're going to come here and we're going to give you, we're going to make sure that you hire the, you know, some uh, NFL people on your staff, right? Let's just throw it out there that he clearly had to say to hire these guys. But what if it was his idea was to bring all of his band of college merry men and run his college offense the way he wants it? And now there's NFL guys that are in there that those are the weak links he's referring to. And the NFL guys who are, again, I'm, I'm not saying they are, but if NFL coaches are bristling at being asked about their resumes and whether they're winners or not, um, I'm assuming it's the NFL men that are on this staff. What if he goes to Shad and says, you got to let me hire the guys I want this time. Give me, let me, let me go hire, as he mentioned uh, Albert, the name of Dan Mullen, who's free after a dreadful season at Florida. And now he's hanging out on ESPN and breaking down all 22s and stuff. What if he can, Mullen wants to get in the NFL, back in the NFL, whatever, and back into coaching, and Urban's like, let me got, let me get this guy. I, I can do what you want for Trevor Lawrence. Let me get my guys in the room. I'm assuming, again, this is all assumptions. And you don't want to stroke this check, and you still believe in Urban despite everything that's gone on. And in your gut, you knew this was the right hire, and you want to do it. And you also don't want to stroke that check and then also start again in all this business. What if you're, you're, you're thinking that? And then comes the two of the worst teams in the NFL on your schedule, the Houston Texans at the New York Jets. Those are the next two for Jacksonville. What if you crap out here? What if Zach Wilson beats your guy? Right? What if Davis Mills beats your guy? What if the Texans sweep you? Don't forget this whole business of Jacksonville not being as good as we had thought they could be started right out of the gate when the Texans beat the crap out of them in week one. And what if they sweep them? And what if they then lose to the Jets and the next day, the 27th, as Albert just pointed out, is the first day of the new fangled window that opens up for all teams to be able to talk to another candidate for your head coaching position. And the only one currently with a head coaching position open is a team with an interim head coach in Vegas. What if Vegas starts talking to people that you're also thinking about when you might not buy Urban's plan to stick around with his guys, you're thinking, that could be the guy for my guy in Trevor Lawrence. What if I just go with NFL guys and this just doesn't work and I'm gone? What if I need to do that? What if the Vikings bounce Mike Zimmer mm. because they lose this week to the Bears or they win and then they wind up losing the following week against the Rams at home? Entirely possible, right? And McDaniels is now available. And Eric Bieniemy is now available, just to name some guys that have been thrown. Leslie Frazier is now available to talk to. Right? You could always talk to Jim Caldwell, by the way. Everybody made fun of me when I'm like, why isn't this guy getting some run for the Lions to get back in there? Then you might, if you're the Vikings, you lose to the Packers on January 2nd. You could start talking to somebody right now. 
let's do it. I got to get a jump on everybody. And suddenly you're Shad Khan and you're getting all the teams jumping on guys that you could get that maybe fits better for you and Trevor Lawrence and you're sick of all these headaches. You're sick of that phone call you got like, hey, did you see what's on Twitter and what's trending right now? Hmm. You're sick of the phone call of like, or the, the email of like somebody sending a link of Tom Pelissero's story to you. And you're like, this didn't happen with Marone and Bradley. It stunk, but at least when we stunk, you know, it wasn't like this. That's what's coming down the pike for Shad Khan and Tony Khan and the rest of that group down there in Jacksonville. Next two weeks, pretty big in that regard. Because if they start winning, they beat the Texans and they beat the Jets, then all of a sudden you're like, okay, yeah. maybe we can do this. And, you, and you know, I'm sure Jaguar fans are like, but, but, but it's the Texans and the Jets. This thing is over. Don't you see everything in the papers? And Don't you see everything? Or, papers. Online? Well, you're not the one who's got to stroke that check. And then look in the mirror and go, I th- man, I thought that hire was my guy. That's all what's coming for Shad Khan, I think, in the next couple of weeks. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.